the, the lighting so you can see the features and the eyebrows are painted a little darker and uh, the camera was just right on you yeah I mean it was forward and there was no side angles to people basically that's why they didn't care about putting makeup on the side no I think they, they, they didn't realize that you wouldn't see this part yeah if you turned your head uh, then you see it then you would then you would see it uh, and they used white makeup for lots of reasons. Number one, to make the face stand out a bit more. And also, you know, that film was red, was not red sensitive, that orthochromatic film. So anything that was red came in as black. So that means if you have a minor blemish on your face, or if you put rouge on, you'd have black, black hair. And blue would come in always as white. So you, you'd never see skies till you get panchromatic film and then you maybe if you really want to make the clouds you put like a, a I recall using a Rattan 29 red filter and that will bring out the clouds really white against the darker sky it looks looks terrific but with that er early film um, you had to be very careful because uh, the uh, people put on red lipstick and it would come in black it looked, it looked terrible and as I said, every blemish would, would come in and you look like pock marks, small pox. Talk about the stories that they were doing, about the times where he got the ideas, it was setting the whole mood of what the era was. People, costumes, it, it was a, a, every day there was a new scene or movie to make, a situation. Or am I not well, uh, no, no, there's so much... Uh, BS really about those early ones, uh, the early films, uh, one of which only immigrants went to the movies. Well, how many immigrants did we uh, did you have in Maine, or uh, or in Vermont? Not not many, and there were Nickelodeons how there. How many Nickelodeons too. in 1908? Geez, I <laughs> I can't quite remember. <laughs> There were quite a few all over the place. They were popular. And they weren't just popular with the lower classes. They were popular with the, with some of the middle classes, too. Kids wanted to see it. The housewives maybe would go in the afternoon. What the hell could you lose for a nickel? Um, you know, that, that, that it was only a low-class um, occupation uh, is not quite true. Maybe people wouldn't own up to the fact that they'd see them. But they did see them. And the saloons didn't like him at all because people were going, particularly the next few years, people start going to the movies and going to the saloon. So it was bad for the booze business. As to the, what the stories are, again, uh, it's mostly about middle class people or well off people. Very few films, the biographs and others, deal with really the poor. And for good reason. Who wants to see the poor? I mean, you're poor yourself, maybe. You want to see people... Well, look at the 30s. Everybody... Depression and people are losing their farms and their houses and they're, and they're driving very old cars. And what do we see? People living in... Wearing tuxedos. With, with pen, everyone lives in a penthouse apartment in New York. No one just has a two-room flat. Right? I mean, <laughs> you think about it. Uh, uh, a lot of people in the 30s, uh, somehow they, were, they had an opportunity to, uh, uh, to live up and go to nightclubs. They didn't even have to earn a living. I don't know what the... They didn't, the guys just had money. Well, but most people had a, had a job, you know? I mean, you had to go to the office. Yeah, yeah. Corner and wheat. It's telling the situations of the times. <clears throat> Well, that's uh, that, uh, Griffith was a, a political progressive, and he, uh, and, you know, that was a Frank Norris uh, uh, story, and then also picked up in the novel The, the Octopus uh, about uh, um, th these manipulators of commodities, and so this guy wants to get a corner in wheat, and that he wants to get all. Uh, get all the shares of the wheat and then drive the price up and make himself a fortune. And while he's making his money at it, of course, then the price of bread has to go up. And uh, people are starving and the farmers are getting nothing. And, and uh, in that film, fortunately, he falls over and dies in the wheat, dies in a pit of wheat, uh, a fit ending to a, a greedy rat. 
But in real life, of course, uh, that He's would be like some of these oil people falling into an oil well and drowning in their own oil. It, well, he's it's great, but I'd love to see a few drown, but that doesn't happen. But he's being affected by what's happening around him. He's now oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, uh, um, as I said, he was p political progressive. These people would say, oh, Grigorovich was a, you know, old-fashioned uh, uh, or fascist or Victorian. That's not true at all. He was quite, he was, um, Maybe Victorian about this ideal of women. He did like, but it's not just with him. It's it's pretty much in a lot of things at the time. He likes the the sweet young girl, but she's in many melodrama long before Griffith ever got into it. Way Down East was a play long before Griffith was ever involved with it, and she's the sweet young thing that's been done bad. And uh, East Lynn is another one. A whole bunch of them. Margarita and Gerda's Faust. It was perfectly an innocent one. It ends up with an illegitimate baby, etc. So that wasn't. But but politically, I think he's uh, he's progressive. He had read he had read Zola. Uh, he his first play dealt with uh, the, the the fact that uh, there were dishonest uh, 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 stockbrokers who were trying to cheat people. Uh, and they don't seem to go to jail. Well, look at today. You get some kid, he sells five dollars worth of pot, and he's in jail for ten years. And you got an executive in a big firm. He steals two hundred million dollars, well, and he gets away usually, or he goes to, or he goes to a nice country club prison for a year or two. Yeah, but where, where's your justice? And I'm no bleeding liberal, but I mean that is, uh, it's obscene. And the two paths is a. The rich man wants to take advantage of the young women. He's setting the mood to what the era is, you know, child abuse, wife abuse, drinking. Yeah. Film is now starting to say something for the first time. Is it first with him to do it? And that's how people were taking notice? No, I think you had the, in literature, you had the muckraking already. The, I had a Tarbell and, you know, and Upton Sinclair writing about the, the uh, stock, uh, the Chicago well, stockyards. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think he read the he read the uh, the, the progressive literature. Uh, after all, Teddy Roosevelt was, for a Republican, quite progressive, and the Republicans hated him, because he he you know he wanted to conserve land and he wanted to get after big business uh, who were really raping the public. Tried the best he could. And then when he unfortunately said he wasn't going to run again, he put Taft in, and Taft was one of the old boy guys. And uh, so he didn't go after anybody. So again, then Wilson in some ways was uh, progressive, the Sherman Antitrust Act and these other things, trying to get after big business. But uh, he, he was also a real, the real racist. He certainly uh, uh, was instrumental in putting the blacks down another notch. And he uh, used them to get into office. Yes. And then when they, when uh, that Trotter fellow w went after him and said, you know, we voted for you, and what have you done? You've really, uh, w I'm going to tell all my fellow uh, blacks to um, not to vote for you. And he threw him out of his office. He told his, uh, his press boy, the uh, press guy there, t uh, Tumulty, Tumulty, I don't know, how do we say his name? Uh, that despicable fellow, despicable fellow, I don't want to see him again.